Hello, 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 I'm be with you. First, Chag Sameach, everybody, Chag Sameach. I just want to open with a song from Moshe Rabbeinu. Let me see. So about 20 years ago, 22 years ago, uh, I was living in New York, and uh, for the Ilula of Moshe Rabbeinu, it's tonight is the birthday of Moses and the death anniversary of Moses, what we did, it was a band called Sheva, and the drummers of Sheva, was, was my student at that time, uh, decided that he wanted me, together with some story about Moses, uh, to sing that song. It belonged to this band. Uh, I wrote a song for the, this band as well. And we sing it together. So I just want to open, as we're opening this beautiful evening, and it's Chag Sameach. And remember tonight, everything you're asking for, light a candle for Moses, anything you ask for. If you if you study tonight and you're making an effort tonight, whatever you want to ask, it's available, okay? so. I'm just going to open it, the, 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 the song called Salam, Shalom. Shalom in Hebrew mean uh, uh, peace. Salam in Arabic mean peace. And the song is very simple. It's a few words. Uh, May peace will come on us. That's, that's the name of the song. I will try to keep it short so we, because we have a lot of information and knowledge to give. But try to be in the spirit. Let your soul go out. If you want to sing with me, sing with me. If you want to light a candle, light a candle. Uh, if you have people who are, God forbid, sick, uh, and not feeling well, uh, please think about them or invite them, even if they don't understand spirituality or Kabbalah or what I'm saying, just by seeing the study or the song online, that by itself will make them feel better. So I will give you a few minutes to text your friend, call your friend, share the video. Is there is a way to share this video automatically with their friend? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a way. So they can share it with the video and everybody can do. So I'm gonna sing now a little bit. <laughs> I have a tea uh, that sent to me by my friend Erica. Thank you, Erica, if you're watching it. The, the, the tea is uh, basically good for my throat. Hopefully my voice will be better. I hope Erica is watching. Shalom Aleinu Od Yavu Shalom Aleinu Vu Shalom Aleinu Ve'al Kulam Yavu Shalom Aleinu Yavu Shalom Yavu Shalom Aleinu Yavo shalom aleinu, od yavo shalom aleinu, yavo shalom aleinu, ve'al kulam salam aleinu ve'al kol haolam salam 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 aleinu ve'al kol Salam, salam. Yavo shalom aleinu, yavo shalom aleinu, yavo shalom aleinu ve'al kulam. Salam Aleinu ve'al kol ha'olam Salam, salam Time to welcome Moses now to study. You had a chance to share with your friend and call all of them. And um, hopefully it will be a wonderful night of miracle 
to cure all people from all disease, from all problem, from all the issue that might be having. So we're going to start first explaining short about Teruma, the portion of Teruma that it's this week. Then we're going to study a little bit about Shabbat Zachor. This Shabbat is called Shabbat Zachor. It's the Shabbat of removing all the illusion. And then we're going to talk about Moses, okay? So we have a few things to cover. Hopefully, we'll be able to do all of it together. So the portion of this week starts with the idea that God talked to Moses and is saying to Moses, talk to the Israelite and they should take contribution. They should take contribution from every person who wants to give the contribution. And this is the contribution that you take, gold, silver, and copper. And then he talk about different fabric, different animal skin, and so on and so on. And the idea we need to understand, the word contribution, charity, tithing, let me say contribution. The word contribution is in Hebrew, teruma, teruma. When you break down the word teruma in Hebrew, is tarum he. We know that the name of God has the letter A in the end. Tarum means elevate. So elevate the last letter of the name of God. Meaning, when you're elevating the name of God back to wherever it belongs, then the name of God is complete. And if there is no space, there is no chaos. If there is no chaos, there is no disease. If there is no disease, there is no pain, no chaos, no problem. So, when we give charity, when we give contribution, we have to think about it. It's not enough to think about just the idea you're saving somebody and now they're going to have food tonight, which is good. It's nice. But you got to think about something more. You elevate the world to a different level. That's what, what it is. Now, the, in, the, in the portion of Teruma, we're talking about the building of the tabernacle. So why the whole concept of contribution and charity is mentioned within this week portion. The idea is, if you think about it, what is the tabernacle? What is the holy temple? What is the synagogue? What is the place of prey? What is all of it? I mean, what's the concept here? If you think about tabernacle, and if you think about synagogue, if you think about a place of worship, where is the idea came from? When the Israelites left the desert, they came from being slave and idol worshiper into a nation that worships through spiritual knowledge of Kabbalah, the connection to the divine. And they build a perfect structure that was told by God to Moses, Moses to Bethel. And, and also uh, uh, from Shevet Dan, Okay, and that was the Mishkan, that was the tabernacle. But if you read this week, Pasha, God is saying to the people of Israel, make me a tabernacle and I will dwell among you. It should say, make me a tabernacle and I will dwell within the tabernacle. Not among you and not within you. That's what God telling them. What is the secret? If you think about God, do you think if I give you 10 locations on vacation, that nine location is a five-star hotel, and one location you read through that information, review, and you hear that the last 20 people who went there had a food poisoning, the air condition is broken, no heater, no ocean view. Would you even consider to go to the 10th place if the 9th place offer you everything in life? If you be honest, no. The creator, the divine. How much opportunity did the divine have up there? Everything. Billions of universes. Billions of angels. But the divine... 
say, I'm talking to the Israelite about giving charity and giving contribution. And I'm teaching them that contribution is for them. How do we know it's for them? It doesn't say, it doesn't say they should give me charity. They should take for me charity. Meaning, when you give charity, it's for you. It's only for you. I don't know a lot of people who truly understand that, but God gave me the privilege to meet among the few people who understand how to give charity, God gave me the opportunity to meet so many of them. And I'm so blessed. I mean, I didn't find somebody who, Glenn Ha, Ben Porat, Yosef Ben Porat, Le'ain, the help of Moses, who's so blessed to meet so many good people. I don't know how many of you meet good people in your life. I meet good people. I'm surrounded by good people in my community here in LA, in Florida, in New York in London, in Chicago, in Colorado, in Texas, everywhere, everywhere. Sweet human being in Canada, sweet. I don't even know where else. China, good human being from all the world is available. So what is God trying to tell us? I cannot tell my people to give charity if I don't give myself. <laughs> so God give us an example. You build me a tabernacle in the desert. Can you imagine? In the desert. And I will dwell within it. I will dwell within you guys. God is leaving everything behind. <laughs> and he let all his energy go where? Into this world. The chaotic world. And when you find a way to bring God into this world. Because God doesn't need an invitation. But he needs a vessel. It's not that he needs it. If God comes without a vessel, we can get burned. It's like almost getting closer to the sun without protection. So God said, listen, I want to give you way more than you can even dream. What do you dream about right now? One million dollars? I want to give you a hundred million. How much love you want? One hour a day? I want to give you all your life, love. How much help? <laughs> but you need to have a vehicle. Like, what is the vehicle? Turma. Contribution. What is your contribution? Go and build some structure for me. Bring some donation and we build. And it remind me, when Debbie and me built Vital, it wasn't easy in the beginning. Structure of the web, structure of this, putting the video, not having money. And we managed, Baruch Hashem, thank God, thank to Moses, to make it all for free for people, whatever people want. Not only that, we have so many family. And the idea of what I'm trying to tell you, if you think of giving, that's become the vehicle where the dwelling of God can go in it. That's teruma. That's teruma. Now, today I receive a gift. I receive an old book from 200 years ago. Do I deserve it? Absolutely not. <laughs> Do I love it? Yes. Those kind of gifts make me happy. What is it? It is a book. It's called Or Israel Biur Tikune Zohar. What does that mean? This is Rabotai, Gvirotai. This is from Rabbi Israel Mikoshnitz. You remember the story I always tell you about the poor couple that don't have nothing to eat. And the husband danced around the table with his wife with the soup, with the beans, and all this. Remember that the Baal Shem Tov promised them that they will have a kid and he will name Israel, that's him. So he, Rabbi Israel Mikosditz, wrote commentary on Tikunezo. So he writes like this on Turma. Coincidence, right? I just received it today. When a person gives charity, I'm reading from page Kav Gimel, that's for the record, for the data, of Or Israel. Because 
כן, כן לחפצם לעשות נחת רוח ליוצרם, ואז אינו בצמצום כלל רק בימין. When you give charity, said O Israel, make sure that you don't think what the thing you're going to get. Think that you're giving it to whoever need, only because you want to give pleasure to the Creator. Wow, it's so beautiful. Meaning, yes, we have a relationship with people, but don't fall into it. That's not the goal. When you give charity to somebody who need, okay, we have a lot of people who help us with vital, thank God, and that's why we're growing. And yesterday, uh, last week, we opened again another non-profit organization, thank God, that helped uh, a lot of people of, in stress, and we're really happy with this as well. So when you think like that, and when you give, if you don't want to create blockage on what you give, give it without agenda. Shadam Ose, Eshum Davar, Davar Azeu Magbilo, אבל שאין הדבר מגבילו בימין לבד, יכול לעלות למכסה העתיק. When a person don't think about the agenda, what he's going to get, he elevate himself, the giver, to the highest level, all the way to the, the divine. אבל בכל מקום, אי אפשר לדבר שהוא בלי סוף לקבל מהתחתונים, צריך להיות הקבלה בשני ידים, ועל ידי העולה בעבודה יצמצם את תפארת אדם. ואת לבוא, כי הרי נראה כי יש לבושים לאדם ולקרם כסף, בגד והידיים ותקרא להם בתוך לבושים. כן מוצא ידי אדם מתחת לגלפיהם, והם גוף עד המלכה בלי לבוש, שם מקבל את הצדקה שהוא בלי לבוש. בדרך כתיב כתפארת דם לשבת בית, אמור לטרנסלנט אין הסקנד, ושם פירשנו שהוא האישה, שיש לו בית, כן תפארת כזו במלכותו, לוקחים אותו בלי לבוש כלל, וזה נקרא בשפה ברורה. So, what it say? When a person start thinking how to give to the poor, or how to give to people, especially in the months of Adar, where everybody should go with money in the pocket to give to people, that money become levushim, that part they become clothing to manifest the divine in your life. That money become the manifestation. וזה נקרא להקדיש ליוצרם בנחת רוח, בשפה ברורה, כמו שאדם מתפרש בכל מחשבת שמביאים לו בת זוגו, בכל מחשבות. Sometimes people give charity, he said, and they think about what they're going to receive a soulmate, what they're going to receive this and this, but you separate yourself from what you want. כביכול הכתוב מתקדש בכל מחשבות העליונות, והרמון מתקדש בנחת הזה, לשפה ברורה ונקייה לערדך במחשבה היחידה, לתפארת רוזו לאהבה את שבחה, הקדוש ברוך הוא ייתן אותנו מהמיוחדים לשמוע הגדול. So, when a person, said to us Rabbi Yisrael Bikoshnitz, when a person is giving the Terumah, as this parasha explained, with all the heart, with excitement, then endless, endless amount of goodness. Sometimes I meet people, when they give the charity, they're making a deal. Or some people who give it to me, they want to impress me. It's good. Not bad. It's better than nothing. But there is some people who just give. It's beautiful. And then I hope that's what they do. They have a relationship with God. Because look what the Zohar said about Teruma. The righteous man has to chase the wicked man. ולקנותו במחיר מלא, and to buy him in a full price. What does it mean? What does it mean? כדי שיסיר ממנו הזוהמה ויכניע את הסמך א' ויתקן את נפשו. If you see somebody who is a terrible person and you're chasing them, you give them cake and cookies and drink and whatever they want, just that eventually they will listen to you so they can change spiritually to become better thing. כי נחשב לו כאילו הוא ברא אותו. זוהר ורס 41 סולם. It's considered as you created it and give him birth. וזהו שבח שיתעלה בו כבודו של הקדוש ברוך הוא יותר משבח אחר. There is nothing more that the creator respect you as a person to do. You find the worst person and you try to make them better. And that's what Aaron Cohen did, said the Zohar. And it said when people do that, they can promise those people 
that even if they did something wrong in their life, that judgment will disappear. Disappear. Tremendous. So the teruma, building of the mishkan, building of everything, the charity, the contribution. Somebody told me a story this week about a person who's a business coach. She's very expensive, of course. And she, she charges usually $1,000 for a session. And somebody calling her from Long Island, New York, and said, I need help with the business, but I don't have money to pay you. She answered something very beautiful. She said, you got to pay something. Otherwise, you would not value what I'm teaching you. She said, it's $1,000. So you got to pay something. He said, but it's $1,000. She said, what you got? She's a business very smart. He said, I got $40. So 40 it is. She got to pay 40 and she coached him. I also had a call today with a lady who has a lot of problems. She's sick. She has problems. I keep helping her for the last two years. So this week I said to her, I think you need to give something after helping her for two years. And if, immediately she said, I don't have money. Immediately. She didn't say, I don't have money, Elia, what should I do? It was, I don't have money and there's no other line. What can I do? It's a big difference between a person who said to you, I don't have money, to the person who said, I don't have money, what should I do? Do, do, do you even understand? I don't know if people even understand that kid. You, you understand what I'm saying, Dev? Huh? The difference between the two? Yeah. Like, wh wh how is it sound? I don't have money, what should I do? Or I don't have money? How does that sound? I don't have money, what should I do? I want to be open. Very, that's what I mean. I didn't know if I'm clear. You know, what should I do? You feel ashamed you don't have money, but you want to do something about it. You know, I had points in my life, and Debbie has points in my life before we teach that we were very poor, to the bottom of the bottom. I mean, I don't want to tell you a personal story about Debbie and me, but we were in the bottom, the bottom of the bottom. And it was some point that I slept <coughs> in, inside the car. Didn't have a place to sleep. And um, I will tell you, I didn't feel poor and all this and that. And at uh, one point, a gentleman find out about what I do and what I am, who I am. And he asked why I'm in the car, and I didn't even mention that I don't have money. So I told him that I enjoy more the fresh air. And the, the, the guy, <laughs> may God bless his soul, the Sutton family, felt it. And he said, I disagree with your decision, and I'm going to take care of everything. Whoever tell you they don't have money, but seek help from you for two years, no good. Everybody has something to give back. <coughs> you either give back a joke a day. You either tell something. But when somebody tells somebody like me in my position as a teacher, as a rabbi, as a guru, as a coach, I don't know how you see me, as a human being, you don't just ask for help without thinking what can you give back. You know, about seven years ago, I had a lady, wonderful lady. She's a famous model from Venezuela. She took me to her house and she asked me to do some lectures and I started giving lecture. Then she said to me if I can stay after the lecture to talk to her. She started crying. She said, my people in Venezuela are suffering. Suffering, Elia. I know you are very direct and honest. Please help me out. What's going on? I said to the people of Venezuela, and I'm sorry if you guys are hearing it, if you're on Venezuela on the line, are slave mentality. Slave doesn't mean that the slave, slave being, they want things just to happen to them, but they don't want to do something about it. And if you live in Venezuela, or if you are from Venezuela, you've already been poisoned with that consciousness. It's called slave mentality. Slave mentality is how can you receive everything for free? So if you think how to receive everything for free, 
not just money, because you don't have to pay with money, but you have to pay with something. You can pay with the joke. Right? And what the Zohar is telling us about this week, parasha, and that's what this parasha is all about. Build something. Build a tabernacle, give charity, give something. If you don't give anything, it's a problem. You know, I have a privilege to teach a group of young kids every Tuesday. I have the privilege, a guy named Nathan is helping me doing it. Wonderful guy, wonderful. One of the leader of our next generation. And he's going to change the world. And the idea is the group of those young people don't pay. Why, why am I doing it? Why am I doing it with you? You don't pay right now for that lecture. The idea I choose for me to do a sharing. And I choose to do a sharing. But if you reach out to me and you say, Eliyahu, I can't pay, how can I give? That's different. But if you say, I reach out to you and I say to you, you got to give something and you tell me, but I don't have money, it's almost, you're choking. So, if you have somebody who want to help Venezuela, tell everybody in Venezuela, not the leader, the leader is just a reflection of the people. Tell everybody in Venezuela, stop being slave, not slave to the leader, slave to your desire to receive for oneself alone. You just want to take without giving nothing back. That's why you're suffering. That's why you end up with a leader like this. Nothing going to change Venezuela until you change that. Things will change when you will change. Things will never change if you don't change. The people of Israel was worse than the people of Venezuela. They is left as a slave. Generation of slavery of 400 years in Egypt, idol worshiping into the desert. Building a tabernacle because they want to include God in everything. That's how you win everything. All right? That's true, man.